All right, greetings once again, and welcome back to Artemis Week. I'm Joshua Santora, being joined by three amazing ladies who are helping to make the Orion program happen a reality. Uh, ladies, thanks for joining me. I want to go ahead and introduce you all. Uh, first up, Laura Palaya is a uh, test engineer um, for Orion. She works at the Kennedy Space Center. Laura, how are you? I'm good, and yourself? I'm doing great. Hey, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, just really quickly, what do you do for Orion at the Kennedy Space Center? So out here, I specifically focus on testing Orion at a system level and ensuring it's qualified to meet the different environments that it's going to experience during launch, mission, and recovery. I also work on testing Orion to ensure it, it meets those performance expectations per, per the design, which is essentially like manufacturing um, company of a, of a car vehicle in, in, a, in the essence. Yeah, that's awesome. We wanted to use a car analogy today to help explain these roles because it is incredibly complex to build a spaceship because that's what we're talking about. This is that spaceship um, recently departed this facility in Ohio to come back to the Kennedy Space Center. Um, so we're excited to have her back. Uh, so next up, we have Susan Baggerman. Uh, Susan, thank you for being here. Uh, what is it that you do? And you're at the Johnson Space Center, correct? I am, yeah. Simon Johnson's being in their performance throughout the mission. Um, and so we basically take a human systems integration approach. We're involved from the very beginning from like the initial architectural and conceptual design decisions all the way through the detailed design, the certification of the vehicle. And then um, we also help contribute to the training of the crew and the execution of the mission. Um, my group spans a wide variety of disciplines, all focused on human health and performance. So everything from human factors to medical operations, radiation, acoustics, food, environmental health, exercise, um, crew countermeasures, basically any of the things that are needed to keep the astronauts healthy, happy, and productive while they're in space. So once the... Where you sit in the car and be sure that you like the way it feels, that you can reach all the controls, that you're able to drive the car, um, and that you basically are happy with um, the car itself. That's that's our focus is that interaction between the astronauts and the, the hardware itself. Yeah, awesome. Um, and then last up, we have uh, Lauren Bacallier. Lauren, thanks for being here. And uh, I, you're at the Johnson Space Center as well, correct? Yeah, that's right, Joshua. I'm here at Johnson Space Center, and I am the flight operations manager supporting the Orion program. Um, flight operations is responsible for planning the mission, training the flight control team, and the astronauts and flying the mission, which means we command and control the Orion spacecraft from the mission control during the mission. Using the car analogy, we are conducting training, sort of similar to learning how to drive a car, what you would learn in driver's education. And then during the mission, we're the actual driver. We're the flight control team that's commanding and controlling the spacecraft during the mission. All right, so jumping right in, um... If you have questions for these ladies, you can feel free to ask those live in the chat window. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll, we have one more episode tomorrow for the rest of Artemis Week. Uh, but let's go back. Laura, actually, tell me about testing for Orion. Obviously, there is a lot of systems thinking about sustaining human life out in the vacuum of space. So do you all do all the testing for Orion? Yeah, so um, kind of... a. The, the day in the life, um, in order to implement a lot of this testing that we're doing, there's a lot of planning that's involved that you need to do first. Most of our days are working with our subject matter experts for the specific systems we're testing and creating those um, detailed plans and procedures and test profiles uh, that we need to do to ensure that we don't harm the vehicle in any way. When, um, our program has actually built another test article, which is called the Structural Test Article, also known as the STA, 
in where we use that to perform a lot of our system level qualification testing. Um, this was done in order to both save on time in where we could do multiple testing at the in parallel and also lower the risk of causing damage to the flight article. And I do have a video of one of the testing that we do with the STA, uh, if you can bring that, that video up. Essentially, this is um, with the STA, us simulating the Ford Bay cover being jettisoned in order to deploy the parachutes that we're going to be using for descent. And here, we're really looking for those vehicle responses and seeing if there's any negative impacts of the vehicle. And we are using the STA instead of the flight article because if there are any negative responses, we're, we're not harming the vehicle that's going to be going into space. All right, and Susan, uh, tell me about your job. What's what's exciting about it and what's challenging about it? Obviously, uh, making a spaceship ready for humans is no small task. Right. Um, so there's a lot of exciting parts of my job. Um, the really neat part of my job is because we're so focused on the human integration into the vehicle, the vast majority of our work does interact directly with the astronauts. So um, we spend a lot of time working with them, getting their input, their experience and ensuring that the hardware design um, really meets their needs. So it's, it's a really fun and exciting job from an engineering integration perspective while still having a lot of interaction with, um, with the people that we're all focused on keeping safe. Um, it's also very rewarding because we feel like the decisions that we're making, the things that we're advocating for, fighting for, the things that we're testing are directly affecting the astronauts' experience. You see here on the screen some of the human-in-the-loop testing that we do. This is a pretty common um, activity that we do where we bring um, astronauts in to either a mock-up or um, like a part task trainer and have them assess the design as the design progresses so that we can improve it um, and enable them to be more productive in space. Awesome. And so, Lauren, um, sorry about that, coming back out. Uh, so, Lauren, what does, uh, what does it take to be a, a flight controller? Obviously, uh, no small thing to train astronauts. I think a lot of times we think of astronauts as being um, one of the greatest, most highly difficult jobs on Earth or in space. Um, so what's that like to be the one to kind of help them learn what they do? Yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, not only do our flight controllers help to train the astronauts, but we also uh, support and command and control the mission during, the, during real time for mission control. And the foundations of flight operations are the backbone of what it takes to be a flight controller for any human spaceflight mission, including for Artemis missions. These foundations establish a guideline for personal excellence. And our flight controllers are demonstrating these every single day as they're supporting the mission, both training the crew and for mission control. And what I'd like to talk about is competence, being that there's no substitute for total preparation and complete dedication. And I think that this sums up the impact of what our flight controller's role is during the mission and the care that we take toward ensuring that our astronauts and our spacecraft stay safe. For Artemis missions, we're currently simulating the various flight phases of the mission and all the complex tasks that we need the flight control team to be ready to do to succeed during the mission. And we practice all of the nominal, that these are all of the expected activities and the off nominal, the unexpected scenarios that we think could occur during the mission. We practice working through the process of identifying failures, troubleshooting the things that go wrong, and then resolving the issues. And we're also ex exercising all of the coordination that happens amongst the flight control team during these simulations between them and the flight director and with the astronauts. Our goal is always to train like you fly. That's something that we say a lot with the program. And that's why these simulations are so important toward building the competence necessary that'll, that the flight controllers will need to support Artemis. Awesome, cool. Um, so Laura, I wanna ask you about the integration to the space launch system. Obviously the Orion um, capsule holds the people, but in order to get into space, it needs the space launch system. So what's that process been like to not only make it self-sustaining, but also to work well with the rocket? 
Uh, right. So we've actually, uh, with our our STA um, article that that we have, we've uh, we've gone through and made it at the interface between the two, and seen what it takes to uh, to perform that integration. And also, we've gone through modal testing. Um, which is where you're applying loads and seeing um, at those interfaces um, what we're experiencing to, to ensure that there aren't going to be any issues when it comes for the real-time day of launch. Uh, how we actually integrate the vehicle is going to be out at the Kennedy Space Center. We have a vehicle assembly building, which is also known as the VAB, and this is where the launch vehicle SLS comes in with the Ryan spacecrafts and gets integrated at that interface. And I think you have um, uh, here's the mobile launcher and the uh, the VAB. There's also uh, with the SLS the breakdown of the of the booster's core stage. Yeah, this one um, of the booster core stage, and you see the the. Orion stage adapter in the middle, that's really where Orion's going to integrate there. And we have about 360 fasteners that we're going to use to make that interface and ensure it's a good connection. And then once we stack it in that inter and create that integrated vehicle, we'll go through a series of testing in the VAB and out at the pad to ensure it works together across end to end, to end across that vehicle. And once after all that's completed, then we'll roll out for launch. Awesome. Uh, so, Susan, what is the what's the plan forward? Obviously, uh, the first flight of so Ryan um, is called Artemis One. Um, so that'll happen next year, and that's actually an uncrewed flight, like you mentioned. Um, that's to be sure all of our systems are in great working order and ready for us to be able to fly a crew safely. Um, then our first crewed flight is Artemis Two. Um, so that'll be in the 2023 uh, timeframe. Um, and we'll be flying four crew members around the moon in a lunar flyby flight. Um, and of course, returning them safely to Earth. And all of that is in preparation for Artemis 3, which will be the next flight, um, which is the flight where we will be putting boots on the moon, uh, delivering the first woman and the next um, man back to the surface of the moon. And that should be in the 2024 timeframe. Super exciting. Um, so we're about out of time here. So Lauren, last question for you. Um, what, are, what are the goals for these future missions? Just as you all um, are working on training the astronauts to be ready, uh, what's that vision for the activity of the astronauts as they go out to the moon and beyond? Yeah, sure. So when it comes to training astronauts, that's a really important part of what we're looking forward to forward to do. And we develop special capabilities in all of our training facilities to mimic what it's like for the crew, how it will be for them in space. And depending on what kind of things we're trying to train, we utilize different facilities to do that. So we have an Orion capsule mock-up that I think you had a picture of with the crew inside, and that's inside of our space flight vehicle mock-up facility. And we use that to train the crew on specific tasks that they're going to need to do during the mission, like suited training in their entry suits. That's a picture of those orange suits right there, getting into the vehicle on launch day and getting out of their suits and stowing them after the translunar injection burn. That's the burn that's gonna take us to the moon. Flight operations also trains the astronauts in that same mock-up on housekeeping, food preparation and exercise. And that's where some of the, the roles of flight operations overlap with Susan's organization as we work together to make sure that all of that works for the crew and that they're safe doing all of those things. And we're also developing a uh, Orion crew station. We're gonna use that to help the astronauts learn how to operate Orion, specifically training them to execute the procedures for navigation and maneuvers, rendezvous and docking, and the astronauts will interact with the flight software that works just like how it will on the flight vehicle. We also will perform integrated training when the astronauts are in the crew station with our flight control team running through those simulations that I talked about in an earlier question. Yeah, so much to do. Obviously, uh, a lot of really interesting, amazing things that have to happen, kind of herald heralding back to the Apollo program with a lot of those things you mentioned, like translunar injections and docking and rendezvous, those kinds of things on orbit. Um, ladies, I know you could talk for days on this stuff. Appreciate you and all of your, your work and your team's work, uh, but that's all the time we have for today. So thanks for being here. Thank you, Joshua. Awesome. Uh, this is going to be it for us today. Um, check us out tomorrow for our final Artemis Week show. And I want to remind you, as always, even the sky isn't the limit.